So apparently this weekend, Tony Ferguson decided to fire himself from his UFC lightweight title campaign. Now, instead of going down the rankings to pick a title challenger, the UFC instead decided to pick someone from out of the weight class to face Habib. True story, bro. So, we are going to have some part-time actor, part-time fighter, take on a Dagestani monster that wrestles bears on short notice. Seriously. This guy? This guy. That's right. This guy. This sudden personnel switch has disrupted my preview plans, but not to worry, I got your back. In a nutshell, the question is, does Max Holloway have a chance at all? Yes. I get it. It's Habib time and his wrestling and size advantage, should settle the issue quickly, do watch my earlier studies if you want arguments as to why Habib is the big favorite. In summary, the on another level, whole different level, different kind of wrestler, beast, monster, unstoppable Habib, just has to walk Max down and get the takedown. Nonetheless, Max isn't totally a sheep to the slaughter. Let's now look at how they both match up. First, Max is a good hand fighter in the clinch and is good at stalling out opponents trying to press him against the cage. As you can see, Max constantly looks for the wrist when clinched up and is very disciplined about this. Habib may be stronger and bigger but even he will struggle to break free from this framing on his wrist. Secondly, Max has a good collar tie, and will often use it in conjunction with his wrist control. Here, you can see Max going for the collar tie, when the opponent tries to push his head into Max to pin him against the cage. This is particularly effective if the cage pinner doesn't want to level change to a double, and is instead trying to just wear you out. This misdirection with the collar tie, and escaping through the open angle, is an energy efficient way to defend for prolonged periods of time. Thirdly, Max has good lateral movement, and it isn't easy to cut him off in the first place. His footwork awareness is very high in general, and he often angles out when someone tries to bull rush him. He is also very good circling away from the cage, when he chooses to be elusive. Habib is not going to be able to chase him down, and expect Max to be running back in straight lines. Fourthly, Max has good guillotine instinct. As opponents are frequently unable to corner him, they are forced to take shots out in the open. When they do so, Max is very good at backing out quickly. With the open space created, he can now sneak his hands in and go for a guillotine. While Habib is not really one to shoot in the open in general, should he be forced to take sloppy shots, Max could capitalize. Finally, Max is good at limp legging out of takedowns. He knows how to make you settle for singles and look to run into space as he frees his leg. Remember, victory for Max in the wrestling department, is not to get takedowns of his own, but to frustrate. Trying to use strength to fight off Habib's wrestling is a losing strategy. Defenses based on mobility and timing, are what will allow Max to stay fresh as the rounds go by. Though I have no idea what his game plan is, it seems unlikely that Habib is going to use the same bull rushing strategy against Max. Max will be faster and constantly circling, and it might make sense to try clinch up when Max comes in to attack. Like I said, Max has very high footwork awareness, and is capable of spending long stretches of a fight, if not the entire fight, in either orthodox or southpaw stands. Against Haldo and Connor, for example, Max fought orthodox. But against many other opponents, he is perfectly comfortable staying in southpaw. Sometimes, he will even switch stances mid-attack so that he can cover more ground and corner you faster. Habib can be flat-footed, and he often turns on the spot when someone is stepping around him. This might make it a good idea for Max to go southpaw for this fight, and keep trying to get outside foot position on Habib. Max is very good at taking this position and coming in with a straight. He sometimes comes in with knees too. Body shots are also part of his arsenal when he steps outside. He is also very good at throwing combinations to try catch you with follow-up blows, if you turn as he steps around you. Constantly making Habib turn, and frustrating his attempts to corner him has to be a big part of Max's strategy. And given the footwork he has shown in past fights, he is well equipped to execute such a plan. Max has other ways to blindside flat-footed strikers though. Because he can fight out of either stance, especially in his latest form, he has started to string together multi-punch combos, with shifting footwork designed to catch you turning on the spot. Much like bantamweight champ TJ Dillashaw, here Max starts out in the orthodox stance, but mid-combo, he switches to southpaw to quickly come in again as the opponent turns. As he unloads a volley, Max shifts back again to orthodox stance, and can now blindside the opponent. 
Max can be very dangerous in the pocket, against a flat-footed Habib. But staying close to Habib to shift, can backfire. While this is a very good tactic, while Habib is fresh, I am not sure if it's a great idea for Max early on. Stepping in like this, is going to give Habib the opportunity to get under hooks, and seems like an unnecessary risk. However, Max also stands switches when he moves backwards. Max frequently steps backwards into a different stance, and immediately comes back in, trying to catch you when you overextend yourself. And this could be more useful when Habib lunges for him. As far as long-range weapons go, kicking against Habib is probably a bad idea. Your feet are probably better served keeping you mobile and circling. As such, Max's jab, could be especially irritating for Habib to deal with. Max has a good circling jab, and could pester Habib with this constantly. Max is also really good at taunting his opponent with slaps, and this could goad Habib into doing something reckless. Because Habib is not really much of a kicker, this tactic could be especially useful. With no long-range counter of his own, Habib will have to either bull rush to quickly close the distance, or start lunging in with right overhands, trying to counter. Anyway, despite this title fight seeming like a bad mismatch, it is actually quite intriguing. Max has all the technical tools he needs to win this, and the longer the fight goes with him standing, the higher his chances get. Bookmakers don't give him much of a chance, but then you never know. After all, who says bookies know everything? According to them, give or take 100 points, Mayweather's chances against Connor in MMA, are about the same as Max's against Nermi. Just saying. All that being said, a month ago, I was contacted out of the blue by a Russian fan over email. This fan, whom I shall call, Lika for 3.0, translated some interesting interviews by Habib's father, which appeared to reveal Habib's entire strategy for Tony Ferguson. That's all water under the bridge, but I will share some interesting tidbits about Habib's title campaign. First, listen to Habib's dad talk about Habib's weight cut. <laughs> Пятая с гонками, мне кажется, такая, больше 10 килограмм. Последний. Вот сегодня утром был 79, после тренировки 77, 11 дней до боя. Это нормальный вес. Проблем не должно быть. Начинал с 82. 85. As you can see, this weekend we will really get to see if the phrase, technique conquers all, really works. Moving on, Habib's dad talks about how long he expected Tony to last. Про Майкла Джонсона вы говорили, что он опасен первые шесть минут. Про Эдсона да. Барбозу, что он опасен первые семь минут. Да. Сколько опасен Тони Фергюсон? Я думаю, минуты две-три больше. Он один из лучших в этом весе по функционалке боец. То есть девять-десять минут. Да. It appears that Habib was expecting not to go the distance with Tony. Which thus begs the question, what happens if Max doesn't break in the first two rounds? Habib will be undergoing a tough weight cut to make this fight and this will be his first five-round title fight. Max on the other hand won't be as drained from the wins, and will be looking to keep Habib chasing after him in circles. We are given somewhat of a hint though, as to what might happen, if things don't go according to plan for Habib. Так это опасно. Ну, ну опасно. Но мы же ищем вот эту остроту сейчас. Мы же просто шли до сих пор. Так а может в бою за титул не надо остроту искать? Ну, Слишком. болельщики же хотели. This seems to suggest that Habib might start taking some crazy risks if he can't get the takedown. Max is a good opportunist and will be looking for counters all night. Staying patient early and being elusive to try force Habib into unforced errors, could be Max's path to victory. Alrighty, that's it for today. Once again, special thanks to Lika for 3.0 for colluding with me, I mean helping me, in shedding light on Habib's title campaign. I'll see you in the next video, but in the meantime, please do leave your predictions below. In closing, a lot of Habib fans will accuse me of fake news and false analysis. But then, if what I just did was fake analysis, then okay, I can give you another reason as to why Max might win. A few months ago, Max appeared in this scene, with someone you might recognize. Was this pure coincidence, or do they know something that we don't? I'm not saying there is a conspiracy going on, but for my world star homies, this is something to look into. Seems legit to me. Till next time.
The cops wanna cut your fucking head off. The fog teeth gang wanna cut your fucking head off. Yeah, I got that effect on people, Poison. Imagine how my old lady feels. Me, I just wanna protect you. Mm -hmm. Get you home safe and sound with all your sins forgiven. But you gotta give me that one. You went across the street. Yeah. Diamond exchange. That's fine.